We are pleased to present this masterclass on EOS evaluation of subepithelial lesions, a scenario that is commonly encountered in clinical practice but remains highly controversial with regards to evaluation and management. Despite limitations, EOS is still the best endoscopic and imaging modality to evaluate subepithelial lesions. In this educational video, we will review the evaluation strategies for subepithelial lesions but not its management, as it varies between societies and disciplines. When evaluating a subepithelial lesion by EOS, it is important to document five morphological features, namely size, shape, layer of origin, echogenicity, and its location. These features help to determine the underlying nature of the lesion and enables its risk stratification. Lesions arising from the deep mucosa are hypoechoic and are either a granular cell tumour, carcinoid tumour or a leiomyoma. Submucosal lesions, on the other hand, can be either hyperechoic, which is a lipoma, hypoechoic, which is a pancreatic rest, or anechoic, which is a cyst. As with deep mucosal lesions, or lesions originating from the muscularis layer are either a leiomyoma, just schwannoma, or a glomus tumor. All these images of lumps and bumps have varied pathology. Starting from the top left, we have a lipoma, followed by pancreatic rest to the right, then carcinoid tumor, a gastric cyst, a granular cell tumor, followed by a chest lesion it would be impossible to differentiate them without the aid of endoscopic ultrasound. However, the data on EUS is sobering. Size as measured by EUS is only 87% accurate when compared to resected specimens. The accuracy for determining the wall layer origin is at best 75%. The accuracy for diagnosing GIST even with tissue diagnosis is 77-90% to 90%, and ectopping pancreas is even less at around 60%. However, US is still far superior to high-resolution CT for diagnosing sub-epithelial lesions accurately. In this video, we will be demonstrating varied pathology that can be diagnosed by EUS and sometimes even successfully treated under EUS guidance. This 52-year-old patient was referred for final biopsy of a suspected gastrointestinal stromal tumour located in the gastric cardia. However, endoscopic ultrasound demonstrated vascular flow on colour Doppler, consistent with a gastric pharynx. This 70-year-old patient was referred with a duodenal lesion as seen on gastroscopy, thought to be a lipoma. After installation of water, an anechoic lesion was seen in the submucosal layer, consistent with a benign cyst. This 56-year-old patient was referred for evaluation of a periodontal mass On EUS examination, the lesion was found to be a vascular lesion with flow consistent with aortic pseudoaneurysm. This 46-year-old patient with liver cirrhosis was referred for suspected gastric pharisees. On EOS, a diffuse hypoechoic mass was seen with involvement of all gastric wall layers, suggestive of linitis plastica. Final biopsy of the gastric wall revealed adenocarcinoma. This 55-year-old patient with dyspepsia was referred for evaluation of suspected chest seen on retroflexion. On EUS, a complex mass was seen to originate from the muscularis propria layer of the stomach, with solid and cystic spaces suggestive of gist. However, fine needle biopsy revealed this to be a metastatic neuroendocrine tumour. A 58-year-old patient was referred for an endoscopic ampullectomy. EUS revealed a mass involving the superficial and deep mucosal layers. The submucosa was well preserved and the common bile duct and pancreatic duct were spared. It cannot be overstated how important it is oftentimes to instill water for thorough examination of the wall layer origin of a lesion. Final biopsy of the lesion was performed and this revealed the lesion to be a high-grade neuroendocrine tumour and the patient underwent a Whipple procedure. 
The 77-year-old patient with abdominal pain had a perihepatic mass on CT compressing the stomach. On EUS, a 2cm lesion was seen adjacent to the liver in the peritoneum. Final biopsy was performed and the lesion was revealed to be a gastrointestinal stromal tumour. This 32-year-old patient with GI bleeding was referred for evaluation of suspected ulcerated gastrointestinal stromal tumour. At EUS, a diffusely infiltrating mass was seen invading all the wall layers, including the serosa. Final biopsy of this lesion was performed and was revealed to be high-grade B-cell lymphoma. This 83-year-old patient with breast cancer and abdominal pain had a gastric mass on CT which was PET positive and thought to be metastatic cancer. On EUS, a complex anechoic lesion was seen in the submucosa. On puncture with a 19-gauge needle, pus was seen extruding from the lesion suggestive of a gastric abscess. After passage of a guide wire and balloon dilation using an 8mm balloon, a 7 French double pigtail plastic stent was deployed to facilitate abscess drainage. As shown in these videos, it is obvious that endoscopic diagnosis of subepithelial lesions is oftentimes wrong and even sonographic imaging in the absence of tissue diagnosis can be erroneous. Therefore, it is important to perform tissue sampling using the best EOS practices to achieve optimal outcomes. In general, lesions suspected to be a GIST must be sampled, particularly if they're larger than 20 millimeters or if there are high-risk features such as cystic spaces, solid components are mixed with calcifications or the presence of regional adenopathy. We have shown that EUS guided final biopsy is the technique of choice for sampling sub-epithelial lesions and is significantly superior to FNA. This patient presented with a 25mm gastric submucosal lesion. These lesions are mobile and can be very challenging to sample as the needle bounces off at each puncture attempt. Positioning the echoendoscope as close as possible, applying suction and complete tip up of the big wheel will enable one to kiss the lesion with the echoendoscope. The technician can help by bracing the echoendoscope shaft as it exits the mouth to prevent the needle recoil effect. These maneuvers should help with successful needle puncture. Once punctured, the needle should be fanned and anechoic areas should be avoided so that necrotic material is not being aspirated. The final diagnosis in the patient was a gist as suspected. The recommendations for management of sub-epithelial lesions vary between societies. A surgical consultation is recommended for all gists greater than 20 mm in size. In general, asymptomatic leiomyoma, heterotopic pancreas, cysts, schwannomas and granular cell tumours warrant no surveillance. However, if a tissue diagnosis is not available and if the patient is asymptomatic, some epithelial lesions less than 10mm in size must be followed with an EGD first at 3-6 to six months and then in 2-3 to three year intervals. For sub-epithelial lesions 10 to 20 mm in size, after the initial EGD, the surveillance interval should be shorter at 1-2 to two year intervals. For sub-epithelial lesions greater than 20 mm in size, surveillance should include both EUS and EGD, first at 6 months and then at 6-12 to 12 month intervals. It should be noted that the level of evidence for these recommendations are weak to moderate at best. To know more about sub-epithelial lesions, please read the fifth edition of our textbook, Endosonography, and to see live cases, please attend the premier global event, Florida Live EUS, from August 17th to 19th, 2023, in Orlando, Florida. If you want to observe and learn evidence-based practices and know more about state-of-the-art EUS technologies, 
Please attend Florida Live EUS from August 17th to 19th, 2023 in Orlando, Florida, where advanced interventions will be performed by internationally reputed faculty from around the world. Please join us at Florida Live, where the magic of endoscopy begins.